So I had a customer reach out. They had this classic Griswold, beautiful, beautiful handmade cast iron fry pan that was their grandmother's. And they asked, you know, how can I recondition this? You know, what should I do? Uh, they were a little bit intimidated by the whole process. It is a, a vintage fry pan. And I jumped on the opportunity to help them physically do this one. I don't usually take customers' pans to recondition for them, but in this instance, I just had to. This pan could be anywhere from, you know, 19, or 18, uh, late 1890s into like 1915, somewhere in there. So it's well over 100 years old. This pan has seen a lot of love. Uh, it's not in bad shape whatsoever. Uh, it's, yeah, I've, I've dealt with pans that are in much, much worse shape than this. Uh, so what I decided that I wanted to do with this guy was approach it with the lye method. So make a lye bath. So I have reconditioned some pretty cheap lodge pans before with a wire wheel. I uh, got a lot of criticism on using a wire wheel because it will ruin the surface. That instance that I, I did on camera, uh, it turned out great. It actually left a really nice texture to it and it's seasoned wonderfully and the, the person who has it just absolutely loves it. However, I really don't want to ruin this pan in any which way. I don't want to take the chance. It's not a cheap lodge pan. It is a, a indispensable, irreplaceable piece of, of vintage cookware. And so I am going to make a lye bath and I'm gonna soak this for many days in the lye bath. And then, you know, hopefully from there, it's gonna be a fairly simple cleanup and then a reseasoning. So step one is that I am using the instructions from the cast iron collector. So castironcollector.com has a tremendous website with resources. So I'm using a method of five gallons of water to one pound of lye, but I have half a pound of lye. So I'm using two and a half gallons of warmish water that I'm going to put the lye into the hot water and mix that up and then basically just settle this guy into the water, put the lid on and leave it. And then we will see what happens in a couple of days. So here we go, pan into the lye mixture. Okay, so it's been more than a couple of days, it's been more like a, a full week that the pan has been sitting in the lye mixture. Uh, it doesn't do anything to it. The lye eats the organic material and won't affect the iron whatsoever. So the longer the better. I'm sure it comes to a point where it just stops being effective um, because it's eaten all of the organic material off the pan. But the liquid looks like, like, a, like a coffee sort of color now. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to pull the pan out. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is that lye is really corrosive to organic material, that would be skin. Uh, something you want to make sure you use gloves, well ventilated area. Uh, when you're dealing with lye, you want to put lye into water, not water into lye. Uh, it can be very, very reactive uh, if you're putting a small amount of water onto a large amount of lye. Uh, but it can also be very corrosive and dangerous uh, to use. So. Use a lot of care. I have made sure that it's well ventilated. I've used rubber gloves uh, any time that I've been looking at the pan, which has been really quite cool. Uh, and uh, now we're ready to get into taking it out, giving good scrub, and see what's gonna happen here. Okay, so I'm gonna try to give you the best angle that I possibly can here. I'm gonna get the lid off of the 
tote that we've had this in and well ventilated rubber gloves pan off so first look here it's still got texture on it yeah there's still a lot of gunk still on it the sides are wonderfully looking wonderfully clean uh, but we're going to get it into the sink I'm going to use my fine chain mail and my thick chain mail uh, and we're just going to put a little bit of elbow grease into this and see how it goes the lye mixture uh, can be used again you can put another piece of cast iron in here or another piece of iron that needs to have organic material off of it this is not garbage uh, I will be reconditioning a couple other pans that I have, but it can go and go and go and go like this. Okay, so pan. We've got the bottom and the top of each that's got some, uh, definitely some organic material on it. Getting get in there for the large, the 10 millimeter chain mail. So this is a 10 mil loop. Get around in there and see what happens. Yeah, a lot is coming off, that's for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so I've gotten a lot of the heavy stuff off using the 10 mil. And now I'm gonna go in and use the fine. So I don't need the water running the whole time I'm doing this, but man, a lot of material is coming off. This is looking beautiful. So, oh, it feels so smooth and so nice. Let's see if you can have a, a see how that's going there. Yeah, it's just, it's everything's come off of there. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The Griswold logo is showing beautifully. Eerie 710B, I really look forward to looking up what that all means. Uh, it's not hard to find the information for classic Griswolds online. Um, the logo changed, you know, every couple of decades or decade, it was updated. There was either company amalgamations or something happened that changed the logo. So you can kind of get it dated fairly closely from that. And so I'm just going to keep polishing away on this pan and uh, get more and more of this off. I'm not, you know, going to be getting this down to bare steel. There's definitely still color of the original seasoning on here, uh, which is not a bad thing. You know, if this pan was right down to its raw metal, it would be silver. And it's definitely not silver. It's, it's got the staining on it from the seasoning and that's that's not a bad thing whatsoever uh, so i'm just going to continue polishing along until i get this just absolutely perfect okay so i have finished scrubbing this pan down and it is in absolutely beautiful shape so you know it still looks like a classic pan it's got some um, you know, divoting, a little bit of damage along the back. It's not in brand new shape. Um, but if I look this good at 100 years old, I'll be a happy man. So what I'm going to do now, it's, it's, it, there is, I can see this, this silverness of the, of the iron underneath this. There's a lot of the season that has been fully stripped off. Um, there's some staining on here, but there's really no organic material left on this pan it's already starting to turn kind of an orangey reddy color on the inside from the oxidization that quickly I, like I literally just finished drying this pan and it's already turning orange uh, and so it needs a seasoning so I'm gonna season this guy in the oven I'm going to season him multiple times uh, I'm going to do a 450 degree oven I'm gonna use my own cook culture seasoning paste and I will coat the entire pan, top, bottom, handle, everything, 100% coverage. I will invert it into the oven and I will bake it for an hour. I will take it out, let it 100% cool. I personally like to leave it overnight. So I'll like do it and then leave it until the next morning. 
and then I'll do that same process over again. I'll warm it, I'll fully coat it, I'll invert it, I'll bake it, I'll take it out, let it 100% cool. There's an argument that that's unnecessary. Once you do it once, that's totally fine. You can start using it. This really depends on how you like to cook. So if you cook with a lot of oil and fatty food or you're gonna start deep frying right away, like you're gonna do the original seasoning and then just start deep frying, awesome, great. You're gonna go in the right direction. If you don't use a lot of fat, you don't cook with a lot of fat, then you may wanna follow the process that I do where it's, I do at least three full rotations in the oven. So like I was saying, I'll wait the 24 hour full curing, like allowing it to harden. What that means is that allowing the, the cooked on oils to fully harden or harden as much as they can, just like paint on a wall. You can paint over a first coat, but it will adhere and work so much better if you wait multiple hours before you do your second coat and your third coat of paint, like we've all learned before, so that you don't get the, the moisture locked in on the base layer and create weakness. And this does happen with uh, seasoning cast iron, is that you can get that weakness underneath. But again, it really kind of depends on how you go about it. If you're using a lot of oil really quickly, as soon as you've got your initial seasoning, you can really lock it in that way, really oily cooking over and over again. It's kind of the same sort of process because what you'll do is that you'll cook with oil, you'll wipe it down, you'll put it away overnight, and you may not use it till the next day or the day after that. You're doing basically the same thing. So my method here is that if you're cooking with a lot less oil and you don't use so much oily food and you're using your seasoning paste or your post seasoning a lot, um, then I find the three method, three day method in the oven works really, really well. And it's a very small amount of time for the life of this pan, because this pan is now gonna go on for another 100 years pretty easily until this process is gonna have to do it, this again, and then another 100 years, and then another 100 years. So very small investment in time to make a pan of this quality go on for eternity. So the next step is seasoning the oven. So the pan is looking fantastic. Uh, I was hoping this pan was gonna look good, but I'm like giddy about how beautiful this pan is. Um, maybe that's weird, but you're actually watching this video too, so you, maybe you feel the same way. Um, so awesome. This method has been just brilliant so far. Hardly a touch, you know, all the people that said to me when I was doing my last project sanding, use lye, you don't have to do all that work. It would be interesting to see how the lye would have worked on the amount of crud that was on this pan. This pan wasn't really that bad. Uh, that pan, the one before, if you watched a previous video of me doing with, this, with the grinding, it was incredible, the buildup on that pan. But I may have been surprised because this is just ridiculous how easy this is. And this pan is like new. Uh, so one layer of my cook culture uh, seasoning paste that is a combination of uh, beeswax, grapeseed oil, and sunflower seed oil. Uh, it goes on beautifully on a warm pan. I just warmed it for a bit in the oven and it is a beautiful coat and now this guy is going to go in the oven for an hour at 450 inverted and then I'm going to take it out and let it cool for a good long time and then we'll do that again and when we're done all three coatings I'll check in and show you how it finishes up and maybe we'll cook something up. Okay so there it is. That is one beautiful pan. That's the Griswold, fully reconditioned. This surface is just so incredibly smooth. And it was interesting, we were looking at this pan earlier and the staff were saying, you know, that really looks a lot like a field and it's incredible. The Griswold and the field, they really do have a lot of the same characteristics. The field that is brand new, premium cast iron uh, that you can buy off the shelf, brand new today, it has a lot of the same characteristics. It's, it's the same sort of weight, uh, same sort of thickness, uh, same sort of sharpness to the walls. Uh, of course, the field doesn't have pore spouts. That's something by design they didn't put in. Um, but there's a lot of similarities between these pans. Uh, they have a heat ring, they both do. Um, and they both feel fantastic. One of them is 100 years old. The other one is, is new. Um, so it's, it's awesome what field has been able to produce. So if you can't get yourself a Griswold, you can get yourself a field. They're pretty amazing. Uh, feel pretty lucky that I've been able to recondition this pan and play with this pan a little bit. 
very excited to give it back to the owner. Uh, I hope they will love it for another 100 years. Um, but I want to do some simple cooking uh, in the Griswold and the field just to do a little comparison because I am really interested to see, you know, does it work the same way? Uh, and so I've just made a simple oat pancake batter and I'm just going to cook a simple pancake in both of them equally same heat and see about, you know, the release and how it cooks through and just see our, how similar is a antique vintage pan to a brand new pan. So here we go. Okay, so that was a super, super simple, quick pancake making. It wasn't a test in any way. Really putting it up against the field, a very, very well seasoned field to a brand new, just refurbished Griswold. It performs identically. It, it basically could be the same pan. <clears throat> it wasn't really a, a, a robust test in any way. That's not what I was trying to do is prove it is a good pan. I knew it's a great pan, um, but just how was the seasoning? The seasoning worked brilliantly. The pancake came off perfectly. Simple oat pancake. Uh, there was not a lot of fat in that pancake. Um, the fat that I used, I put a little bit of grapeseed on and it worked great. So the lye bath method that I got from earlier and that the link is below. So I've got the link to that lye bath method below. Um, it's phenomenal. I'm, I'm really, really happy. I'm gonna do all of my pans this way going forward that need a deep cleaning you know things that need just basic maintenance i've got other videos about how to take just build up carbon off that's a simple one um, but it's something that is really really uh, penetrated with the carbon on it and it's stuck and it's deep and it's and it's built up and it's just not coming off with anything that you can do manually that lie bath is a dream so highly recommended hope this was helpful any questions please throw them below thanks so much